we define the props for a simple list component as an array of items of type string. Within the list component, we render a root div that establishes a nice vertical layout with a gap of 10 pixels, and then we simply loop through the prop items and render them one by one within simple divs. Now we can use this list component to render any array of strings, for example, alpha, beta, and gamma, and this will work exactly as you would expect as we can see in the browser. Now we can make a slightly better list component that works not just with strings, but with anything that React can render by changing the type of items to be React node. This gives us a bit more flexibility because now we can modify the individual items to be more stylistic, for example, changing the gamma to be strong and emphasized. And we can verify that when we visit the app in the browser. Now this sets us up to introduce the concept of generic render functions. The key objective is to allow our consumers to provide us with a list of items as well as a custom render function that can be used to render the individual items. We accept a generic type argument to the list props which will be used to specify the type of the individual items. And then we add a render item function which will accept an individual item and return a rendered React node. We modify our list function to also be generic and then use this generic argument for list props. And now instead of directly rendering the individual items, we pass them to the render item prop. With this in place, the individual items that we pass to the list component can be any JavaScript object that we want. For example, here we have objects of the structure, name of type string and location of type string. And now we can wrap any advanced logic that we want within a custom render function. For example, if the location is America, we can say it a bit more strongly as compared to the other item names. In our list, the location America corresponds to the name beta, and we can see that beta is rendered as bold by our app component. Now TypeScript will automatically infer any generic arguments whenever it can. For example, here it's inferred the type of the item to be something that has a property name of type string and location of type string, as that is the type of the members of the items array. However, we can be more specific if we wanted to. For example, we can define our data to be something that has name and location of type string and then pass that generic argument when we try to use the list component. This will enforce that the individual items always conform to this particular data type. So if you make a silly typo within the individual items, something like that can be caught at compile time by TypeScript. And that's it for today's quick tip. Thank you for joining me. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this. Check out the other tutorials on this channel and I will see you in the next one.